Welcome back, my fellow duplicates, to the ultimate automation challenge. Now, in the last episode here, we left off with piles and piles of steam because, unfortunately, I made a mistake where I let some regolith get into my pond down here and then that just started to blow up my base. Now, there's a little bit more story to this because I actually recorded an episode last night. But the problem is it was so horribly boring and annoying that I, I could not make you guys suffer through 30 minutes of me sweeping regolith. And as you can see right here, I have 10,965 tons of regolith. It is, it's pretty much everywhere. So one of the things I came up with in that, in that video that I recorded was kind of a, a containment chamber. There's one method to kind of try to get some of that regolith at least away from the rest of my base to try to like box it in a little bit. And that was really kind of based on the recommendation from Simi and some other people that are recommending the same sort of thing where you guys are just kind of, you know, boxing in that area of, of regolith and whatnot. Now, here's the thing about that. While I, I like it and it's a solution to a problem in the game, the game is currently trying to patch away the regolith problem in, it, in its latest next update, I should say. And here's the other thing. I honestly don't want to spend the next six hours of gameplay sweeping regolith or trying to just work on different ways of containing that regolith. I've, I got a solution, and what you do, at least here, is I, I fill up these storage compactors, I made this one a higher priority, then you can open it up and drop it through the doors, and voila, there's a bunch of regolith that'll be in that one spot right there, and you can just let your duplicates run and make that happen. Now if I can get rid of some of this steam, which I am trying to let off vent into space up here then I could do something with that and maybe set up an auto sweeper arm for a short enough time to make that happen. But the, the reality is there's so much regolith in this base and this base has been pummeled by so many meteorites that the temperature inside of here is just ridiculous. So rather than make you guys suffer through hours and hours of me sweeping stuff and me constantly complaining about it, I'm going to make an executive decision here and I'm going to move this regolith into this spot. I'll still deal with all the stuff that's right here and, you know, throughout the rest of the base. Here's the other thing. Uh, there was a, a patch earlier in the game where they patched the whole thing where your base is constantly being destroyed by meteorites. Now, I was, I was building a lot of steel and bunker tiles to take care of that. What I've done here is I've added a little bit more bunker tiles to the spaces where... I have not protected anything. The prob the point is, this is causing so many problems that I'm spending all my time trying to fix something that's already been patched out of the game. And it's really taken away from what this series is supposed to be about, and that is automating. You know, it's hard to do automation in these places where the temperature is just too hot for to build equipment. So, rather than constantly try to deal with these problems over and over and over again, I've taken the liberty to put down some bunker tiles just to save my sanity because you know what? I really just don't enjoy the playing the game if all I'm doing is sweeping up regolith. So how this works is uh, all I do is I take this and I, I take regolith and that's what goes inside of there. And then I open up this door. Once I do that, whoop, all of that regolith drops down there. And now I can then close that door back up and I've sealed off, you know, this stuff from the rest of my base. Now there's a new critter that'll be entering the game and that critter will actually eat the regolith and earlier in the patch notes, and that was actually going to allow them to make more and more stuff. But as it turns out, it looks like they're trying to make it so that it actually makes less and less. So it's a way to control the amount of regolith in the, the space environment with that critter. Unfortunately, that also means the dirt doesn't multiply, but I don't know. There might be more and more patches at this point. They're trying to balance certain things. They introduced a lot of meteorites in it. They also introduced a lot of imbalances to the game, and over the last several different updates to the game, they've been trying to work at, at balancing it out in such a way that it's both fun to play with and is still a challenge. Okay, so here's the other thing that I was doing in the last 50 cycles here. I was sweeping out this entire area down here. So you can see I've got some clay and whatnot and different mavic rock and all of that is heated up to about 140 degrees celsius and that's really working to maintain the temperature of the steam here and what i'm doing to cool down the steam is i've opened up this cold biome or previously cold biome there's really no ice left in it and as the steam that's over in this area is kind of moving through here it's actually condensing down 
you know, in this area right there. And then it gets pumped by this pump back up into this area. And that's actually working to cool down the steam, hopefully to the point where it will eventually uh, start to condense. And then I'll just have water. The other thing I've been working on is I've been able to finally get all of the stuff out of here. And I did sweep it out. And you can also see some different areas where I simply buried a uh, bunch of regolith. You can just see tons and tons of it right there and tons and tons of it right there. I just destroyed the floor and dumped it in. A uh, super annoying way to deal with this stuff, but whatever. That's that's the kind of thing, the solution that I was coming up with just to kind of get it out of my way. And I, I'll be honest, it just drives me nuts. So I did the same thing here because this was, I mean, just look at it. There's just, holy moly, look at it. I can't eat, it scrolls beyond the bottom of the screen. And that was keeping this area right here super hot. I think at one point I calculated how much regolith I needed to sweep. And I had enough for, I think I had enough for over 600 storage compactors. So this is what I'm going through down here in order to cool this back down and make it manageable. Up here, I've got this thing to the point where it's actually at a somewhat decent temperature. I don't know, the temperature's kind of like this and that, but the carbon dioxide geyser should be able to run out, and then I'm going to use the carbon skimmer to run clean water up here and then make that into polluted water and then cycle that back around down here so that essentially by rotating that liquid around, I can, I'm going to keep dropping the temperature because I'm using the fixed outlet temperature of the carbon skimmer to, to really delete a lot of heat, so long as that still works. Now, based on some of the other things that I was working on here, I've, I've set up this down here. This is the hydrogen vent and built around here some granite tiles and the rest of this is abyssalite while we can still build it. I want to take advantage of it. So uh, this is a Venturi Wieswort system that's got a self-cooling thing. So I'm pre-cooling this hot gas that'll be coming into this Wieswort so that it doesn't set uh, shut down. And this should be able to, you know, provide power for the systems up here that I want to run. And at the same time here, it'll also kind of provide some cold hydrogen if I want to use that for air conditioning. However, the big thing will be running liquid down to the thermonolifier and making that work as well. So I can, I can use that to kind of pump some of that hydrogen down there as well for whatever I don't, whatever amount I don't need to use it for power, whatever. I've also been messing around with the natural gas geyser down here, again, with another Wieswort to see, you know, what that'll do. So there's some interesting things going on, but not a, nothing too amazing. So that is where we start our journey today. I'm going to dig this up. I'm going to allow a little bit more natural gas to kind of move around and eh, we're, we're going to see what happens with this. Now, in order to get this system down here up and running, I was having some difficulties with that. And the reason I'm having problems is because I've got a gas lock down here. So I have a pump up here that's kind of blocked and it's really not doing anything. The problem is that it's only going to move the light gases that can possibly make it all the way up there. So what I really want to do is find a way to get the gas out of this area down here uh, so that I can fill this area with 100% hydrogen. Otherwise, I don't think I'll be able to actually get this whole system to work as intended like you saw in my video. So I'm going to try to put a, a gas pump down here and then run that so that I can actually, so that it can clean out the environment, I should say. So yes, this is what I was watching for several hours right here. Duplicants run, they go up and they sweep. How boring. <laughs> so I have a bit of a filter system going on here. And what I want to do to make this, this system work and work correctly is I do want to detect hydrogen right off the bat. The thing is, I want to be able to store up some of that hydrogen if I do detect it. Otherwise, if that becomes backed up, then the hydrogen will just continue to move on to the right and it won't, it won't do anything good for me, I should say. So I'm going to put a hydrogen uh, generator up here and I'm going to try to dig out this area over there and I'm actually just going to build one of those uh, storage tanks or a gas reservoir. There it is. So this will be hydrogen, just like so. But rather than run this pump, I'm going to run this pump down here and it'll feed the rest of the system. All right, so then I'm going to finish that up by just 
pumping it into this chamber over here on the right. If anything that is in there gets like, I guess gets past at any weird gas. So really all I'm looking for is oxygen or, well, it would be natural gas, but no, now I'm gonna look for hydrogen here. And then natural gas will go down to the bottom. So it kind of, I don't know, there's all natural gas everywhere now. <laughs> So one of the things I noticed with this wheeze wart is that in this arrangement here, it doesn't seem to be working as intended. Not 100% sure why, but I'm going to mess around with it and see if I can figure it out. I think one of the things I'm going to try to do is just make it so that it has one, one tile that I can go to. All right, so I'm going to let this sit for a little while, and if this is working, then I should see the pressure in here just continuously go up and up and up, and it'll become, you know, really high pressure in there. Actually, that means I should really install the gas pump before that happens. So here you can see the liquid system working. It's trying to cool this down. Just kind of pumping that liquid. Doop, doop, doop. And it's condensing the steam down. And this will continue to work for a little while until it gets too hot in here. I'm just relying on the thermal mass of all this granite over there. You can see here I'm still filling these storage compactors. There's just so much of it. Where are you? Oh my gosh, another 21 tons, see? This is what I'm talking about. There, I just moved 100 tons. <laughs> Still more to move. Ah! <laughs> so here's what I'm doing. I'm basically just dumping all of this on the ground. And then I just go back, copy the settings, and then bring in more stuff. <laughs> oh my gosh, they're... Look, they're still finding more regolith. Where is it? Ah! All right, so let's get these pipes built. Let's see if I can get this system up and running as intended. Get that wheeze ward out of there. Let's go take a look at this natural gas. Is it doing what it needs to do? It's at 5.5, 5.6. Maybe? Hard to say just yet. I mean, it is flowing, but it doesn't seem like it's... Oh, crap. I forgot to plug it in. Uh-oh. This is why half my base is full of natural gas. <laughs> Now I'm planning to do the exact same thing over here where I have this guy. So that'll be cool once I get over there. You can see the steam is slowly starting to cool down. Some areas are getting down to 112 degrees Celsius. Hopefully by the end of this, that'll start to condense a little bit. Yeah, so just like Moondrake was talking here, he had 808, this guy had 1,400 kilotons of regolith. <laughs> You're right, this game is definitely missing a battle royale mode. I mean, isn't that the thing these days? Everybody's got a little battle royale going on. Okay, so here's what I'm hoping is going to happen. Hopefully we're going to draw enough of the gas out of here <laughs> so, so that the hydrogen can make its move and then start to fill this area. So if I put an airflow tile here and then I can start to build it back up again. I gotta get the, all the stuff I want to be made of abyssalite done, otherwise I'm gonna be in a world of pain. Not exactly, but I'll have to kind of change my game plan a little bit. Crap! Here's more regolith! Are you kidding me? Oh, it's just a little bit. We can get rid of that. There we go. I'm gonna move this wheeze wart from there to there. That'll be good. We'll sweep this up. And try to mop that up. And then hopefully... Before all of this is done, I can build the rest of this up. Maybe even sweep this stuff out. Yeah? I think I might want to leave that one open so the oxygen can get out. Yeah, look at this. This is now up to six kilograms in there. Beautiful. So here's what makes this so difficult, is that I'm pumping, but I'm pumping at just like yeah, milligrams. Uh, I'm hardly moving anything at all. I mean, there's barely any oxygen down there. So I think what I need to do to flood this out, essentially, is I gotta let this hydrogen free enough to get in there and try to flood the system and force that that gas in here down to the bottom. Yeah, so this system here doesn't seem to work when I run in extra fast mode where I press Alt and Z. And for a long time now, it's happened to where that the gases don't work exactly as you'd expect them in that mode. For some reason, there's something that changes in the code, I guess, that kind of simplifies the gas movements or something like that. Like it doesn't do all the calculations. 
So it kind of makes it hard to play the game really, really fast. I don't know, I'm speculating. But just letting this loose, and as you can see, I... You know, now look at that. I got the hydrogen over here. It's doing great. This thing is actually starting to do what it's intended to do, and that's to build up more and more pressure. But when I was running in the ultra-fast mode, it wasn't working, so... Something to keep in mind. I'm really looking forward to having, like, jetpacks, though. That'd be That's gonna be really fun. Okay, let's see if I can block this off. Yeah, see, now we're getting a lot of hydrogen out of it. That's good. What, 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 what are you guys, you guys are all waving at each other, and then what? You pee on the ground? Oh, come on, that's just gonna mess me up. Or, or not. No, it's definitely messed me up. Come on, oxygen, get out of here. Nobody likes you. You weren't included in the first place. Had to make that joke, I'm sorry. Okay, so here's some other things that I've been up to recently. I've actually finished uh, building my little quad here. Check that out, look at that, it looks pretty cool, doesn't it? And just today, I got the goggles thingies, so I'm actually able to fly this in first person. Over the weekend, it was super soggy, but I went out there anyhow and tried to fly at line of sight. But trying to keep track of this thing and the orientation and, you know, as it gets 30, 40 feet away from you, is just impossible. It's like, which way is forward? I put, you know, neon indicator things on the stuff, but it's just too small for me to kind of visually see it. But I put the goggles on here today and, so the first time I went to fly here on my on my very first flight of my quadcopter, my brain was just not used to it. I was hearing the the quad out there, and I just was not I, I was just timidly moving around. Second time, I had to focus quite a lot, but this was my third pack. So I had done probably about 20 hours in the simulator by now, and this is just legitimately my third flight with my quad in real life. And it's really cool to see just how you can go from simulator to real life and you know be relatively confident and this was the moment where my brain is just like yeah now I get it it's no longer this crazy sensation of me you know hearing this thing and looking through this screen and whatnot you can see I mean that happens in the simulator you hit the ground and you can kind of correct before it crashes somehow but I was able to do that just fine so obviously I'm not up to this you know some real professional level like you see a lot of people flying but I don't know I was able to do some cool things and nearly crash a couple times. I'm, I'm slowly mowing the grass with my quadcopter and trimming back a lot of bushes. I have a lot of bushes to trim. But this thing's a lot of fun. I, I enjoy it. It's definitely kind of a steep learning curve, though. This is it. That is, this is cool. Where I just, I've always wanted to fly between that really big tree and, this, and that shed over there that I have. And here's a little moment of... That was just a moment of full throttle right there. Just a touch. I mean, this thing... This, this little guy only weighs 250 grams, but maximum thrust is right around two kilograms. So it's got a lot of, got a lot of punch. But right, this is on 3S, so it's not quite as powerful. But that would be 4S. It's got about that much thrust. So this thing's quick. It's probably a lot faster than I should be flying around in my backyard here. But I think the 3S is okay. I have it a little detuned in this video, so I don't go flying too far, too fast. But you'll see here. Yeah, I punch it way up in the sky. You can see just how big those trees are. That is such a... I love that big tree. It's beautiful. But, um... I'm afraid of it catching my drone. Because <laughs> I don't think I can throw anything up that high. Like, that's way up there. Whoops. Yeah. That was a little bit of a sag right there. Unfortunately, I didn't give it enough throttle. Then you gotta clean it up. Anyhow, fun stuff. I thought you guys might be slightly interested in what I'm doing with this. I think it'll make some cool 3D printing projects when I go to kind of come up with my own frame designs and whatnot. Yeah, something to do with the printers, you know? All right, so how are we doing over here? We have some really, really stubborn oxygen. Like, seriously, why won't you just get out? Leave. Leave, oxygen. Seriously, you're just like, you're just chilling there. We got a little bit of hydrogen right there, but no. No, just some, just some polluted oxygen. All right, fine. I'll try to uninvite you this way by destroying those tiles. Maybe that'll let that oxygen get out of there. You really don't want to have oxygen and stuff down here. It's just going to cause problems. From the looks of it, I may just want to destroy all of these buildings. Let's see if I can really just get rid of that. This is okay. This is all hydrogen. That's what I want there. 
Are you kidding me? This stuff's what? Full of regolith? Like, where are you finding this? Okay, so it's all except regolith. I'm just gonna be sweeping that forever. Go away! No more! Hmm. Steam is slowly moving further and further in here. I kind of feel like I should mop this up. And then... Yeah. I should automate that. I was kind of hoping it wouldn't take this long. But it is. <laughs> Hydrogen sensor. There you go. Put it right down there. And then that's going to be plugged in. So once I have enough liquid, then I can move the clean water. What is going on now? Now why, why do I have so much liquid down here? Are you kidding me? What? Where is it coming from? Eventually, I will get all of this gas out of there and it'll just be hydrogen. Sometime. Maybe. Maybe never. I believe it can happen. You know, I'm not so sure this is working. Maybe there's something more to it. Let's put a door down there. Yeah, but before then, let's pump a bunch of this out. There, so now this is set to 10 kilograms before that'll run. So it'll be a little bit more efficient. Yeah, perfect. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Okay, so I'm going to crank that all the way up to its maximum pressure. And then... Interesting. What if I put a sensor in here connected to that door? I think there might be something more to this Venturi Weeswort thing that I didn't think of. I don't know. See, I'm experimenting now. Should really be doing this in like a, a different video. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm just going to detect how much gas there is there. And once it goes down to a nice low pressure, I'll be able to close that door off and open it up and close it. So it'll work a lot like having a pump that's pumping into that area. Mm, maybe that pulses does something. Am I down to hydrogen yet? Man. Okay, there's just one block of oxygen right right there. Nope, there's two. So I should be all set to do this number. Nope, there's still a little oxygen right there as well. MCG. Are you kidding me? Get out of there. And what is with this polluted water? Why in the world does it keep showing up? It's just, it, there's, I didn't have this problem yesterday. Okay, reloaded the game. Hopefully this stops my random, like, phantom polluted water problem. <laughs> One of the questions is, have you ever considered the heat of meteors to boil your water or something? Yes! Matter of fact, that's like one of <laughs> that's my major problem at the moment is that it's got too much heat. Too much. Look at this, 187 degrees. If you spit, it would turn to steam before it had a chance to land. Look at this, I'm still trying to like sweep this up. So one of the other thoughts is that I can use like this polluted water down here and just pump it in for a little while. I'm, I'm pretty much at that point where I could do that. Especially now that I have some power nearby. The thing is, I really want to get this stuff out of there before I do that. Otherwise, it's not going to be worth it. I want to cool the steam, not all the, you know, tons of... More regolith? Oh my gosh. Get out of there, bro. There's more of it. There... There's another 23 tons. There's another 24 tons. There's another 25 tons. This is unbelievable. Although it sounds like I'm not the only person here to actually, like, start using <laughs> cheaty methods to kind of get rid of some of this regolith. Sounds like if you just let it sit around, it'll actually, like, just lag your game out. Technically, I could just bury this, but... That would be... even more annoying to me. I don't... I could not sleep if I did that. This drives me nuts. I hate that. And this drives me nuts. I don't like that either. You know what? I don't like that so much. It's just gonna go away. Goodbye. Goodbye. All right, that's enough. That should hopefully take care of it. Nope, there's more here. Crap. Okay, whatever materials down here is unfortunately just gonna be lost. Goodbye. <laughs> I've, I've, I've been sweeping for three hours, guys, at, at three times the speed. Like, I'm over it, in case you couldn't tell. 
Have I finally cleaned out? Yes. Okay, good, good, good. Finally got this back down to a pure hydrogen area, and all I have to do is finish off the last of this tile right there. What was I doing down here? Totally forgot about this area. This is, let's say, below 5,000. Now... Three thousand or run. See how that's creating that nice flow there, where it's a nice low pressure, and this is up to ten point five. There's something about that. There's something about plugging that bottom off or something. I don't know. It, 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 there it is. It's working again. Mister mystery to me. It's like I don't need this. It, is it, it? Now I'm just curious. Like why? I have like I had ten kilograms up here until I started popping open the door. Whatever. This will be interesting. At least I'll see the door move. I've automated it. Yes. Okay. So now, the last thing I need to do here is to tie this pump in to that automation. So all of that is one singular thing. So unless I need more power, there's really no reason to run this gas pump. Ha! Take that. Okay, so this is slowly cooling down. And this over here is what I'm going to focus on next. I want to tap into this natural gas geyser so that I can start to build up more and more natural gas over here that I can use to power up equipment in this area or wherever else. I mean, it's, I need it for something. So I'm going to allow my duplicates to go through here, and they're going to have to trek through some of this water. Eh, that shouldn't be a big deal. And I'm going to speed up the cooling down of this steam here. I'm going to do that by building a little bit of an extra pump. This should be plenty of water down there. Gosh, I don't know. Maybe? This thing's like not even running. It's dormant. Way to go dormant on me right when I wanted to use you, man. What a, what a boring geyser. Okay, so I'm going to build a ladder there, and then a pump down here. Gross. And then i got to build... Powered all of this. Yeah, forget it. We're just going to manual generate this for a little bit. I'm going to have to go to insulated pipes over here, and then have that feed into this system. That hopefully shouldn't be too much construction for my dupes to take care of. Okay, so one last tile right here, and that will be up and running. You can see this is up to 11 kilograms now, so this is working. I knew it would work. <laughs> Maybe it's something about 10 tiles. Maybe that's like just the magic number. No, I've created something I don't fully understand. And it's going to take over my base. Oh, hey look, I'm building something over here. That's nice. How much oxygen do I have in here? Ooh, that's not much. What happened to all my oxygen? Okay, we're gonna re-enable that guy for a little bit. Why why aren't you running? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. No! I took my eye off the ball for quite a long time. No, wait. Why what 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 is going on over here? Why Weird, so this got stuck somehow. Ah Running into some weird little bugs. How did the gas bridge break? <laughs> oh, temperature? It got that hot in there already? Hey, 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 hey. So I guess I do need to circulate this round, because otherwise, that temperature can be far too hot over there. Okay, so one of the other things that I, I didn't mention here is that Lurda can now make gristleberries, and she can also do the fried mushrooms down there. It's working really good as far as the food is concerned. I got a lot of hungry duplicates though. Man, do I have a lot of omelets. Eat some of that. 1,170. Where did all the omelets come from? Really? What happened to you guys when I wasn't looking? These poor hatches. Where was it? Where was it? This gas bridge is just going to annoy me. Get out of here. You must go away. <sighs> okay, yeah, I got steam there, but... 
This is just too cold. I thought I adjusted the temperature on this thing. Above five degrees then. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna build a couple of thermal shift plates down here. Hopefully that will help me condense some of this steam by balancing the temperatures a little bit more. See, the problem is everything's turning to polluted ice. I've just got mountains of it. Here's another idea. If I put some storage compactors in there, I can store polluted ice down here. I could just sweep it up there for a little while. That should last a good long time. Yeah, now I got like 20 kilograms up here. Beautiful, and then the pump turns on and pumps a little bit of away, it away. I could really just get rid of this now. That's working out good, I like that. We can also see that this is working as well. You can see the amount of hydrogen here, it's just a few grams, but up there is quite a lot. The temperature is not all that balanced, though. Not a big fan of this plan either anymore, because now I don't... Uh, polluted water is going to get in there and it won't be able to... But I, you know, you mop it up a little bit, right? Oh, there's always a solution to the problem. Okay, so I'm going to deconstruct this tie, uh, ladder right there, and then I'll plug it up after opening that mechanized airlock. That's going to unleash the gas. And that gas pump is already broken, so I'm off to a good start. How is that even 190 degrees? Oh, well, that worked. Okay, so I'll put polluted ice in there just for now, and I can kind of sweep up some of this. And yeah, no, now, what's going on here? Body temperature. Why is the temperature not right in there? Hmm. So the body temperature in there finally got hot enough to where it isn't working anymore. Oh, but I got all this hydrogen here. And that's doing a good job of keeping this cool. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to use a gas bridge right there. And then we're going to create a loop for that to go back through because it, its return temperature is 23 degrees Celsius, which is just like perfect. So I'll let it go across. We'll use some radiant pipes. And then we'll run right back to abyssalite and drop it back down over here. Such spaghetti. What's everybody doing around here? Oh, okay, well, um, brought in a lot of polluted water. That worked. We can disable that now. I don't need any more. It's working. Turn it off. I looked away for just a moment. What? And that's... Okay, is that cold? Yes, it is. Finally. Okay, good. So now I can put in some water sieves over here. And they won't instantly break. Yes. Which means if I detect, you know, the liquid over here being polluted water, I can just re direct it to the sieves which are self-contained units aren't they of course they would be self-contained units <sighs> no 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 i said disable please do what i tell you duplicates now <laughs> disable the building not more okay so this uh, I think I'm at a point now where I can go ahead and I can use a an airlock over here and I can start to trap some of this steam before I end up blasting it all off into space because I might mm -hmm, hopes of cooling this down yeah that's not gonna happen maybe maybe I don't know probably not the thing is there is enough of it and it's kind of like it's begging to be turned into a steam turbine if it was just a little bit hotter. Oh, it is just a little bit hotter. Mm -hmm. You forgot, me, you forgot to destroy, oh, come on. Um, okay, well. <laughs> I was not planning to do this. Apparently I just sucked all the polluted oxygen down here into this chamber. I mean, it works, but that wasn't what I wanted. Can't believe I'm having such a hard time with this steam. Wait. Nicola, where are you going? Okay, so I'm gonna add a few more temperature shift plates. Ah, <gasps> Meep? You actually destruct... Yes! You got rid of a ladder in the correct order! You're so super, dude! Um, hopefully we can get some of this, more of this to condense. Got a couple of strategies here. Let's see what happens. 
Obviously we got the temperature shift plates, but then I'm gonna try a couple of tiles to where I can might be able to see the reaction. There we go, yeah. Nope, nope, not quite. It's starting to happen. I can see it every now and then the steam just starts to, maybe if I put a tile right on top of that, maybe that'll just be the key. Let's see how this works. Now, finish it. Oh, man, I forgot to, darn it. So now I can put this pump in here. Ha! I don't really have any plans beyond that, but at least I can do what I need to do there. Beep. Go open that door. Open that door. My duplicates are so dysfunctional. Please plug this off before. There's some abyssalite right there. Oh, you just. So this, as weird as this is, yes. Keep working. Look at all that water down there. I don't know if I've been just been pumping it in or whatever, but it's actually, it's actually there. So let's just see how much steam is in this one spot. See if it dips down. Oh yeah, 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 it does. You can see it right down here. Every once in a while, you'll see, you know, it condenses down and goes away. So I, this this is to the point where it's actually cooling down and it's condensing. So I solved that. Eventually there will be a chain reaction and this whole thing will just it'll pretty much be left with a vacuum, but that's not happening right now. Speaking of situate, you do, you do. Oh no. Well, that ice didn't stay. I keep forgetting. <laughs> I was gonna close this off. <sighs> it I keep making problems for myself this is doing too many things at the same time here there we go I have to deconstruct a little bit and start emptying out some pipes here what I need to put in is a sensor right here so I can get rid of that hey is this thing now working it is how about that it's still too cold but uh, it's gonna count for something all right, so let me just wrap this up. Uh, I got control of the steam chamber over here, so I'm starting to reclaim a lot of the steam in this area. I also have the doors open as well, so that any of the steam that was up here that I haven't already vented off into space is now being reclaimed by heating up this biome over here. So this will work for a little while until the granite just gets too hot, and then, well, it just won't work anymore. It does look like I have an opportunity to potentially take some steam up here and maybe run a steam generator for a little while if I wanted to do that. I don't know. That's one of the ideas. Definitely, I think one of the cool ideas would to be would be to run a steam generator off of Regolith. I think that would be a, a great goal for something that I could do in this space so that Regolith, instead of just being a hindrance, can actually be something that we can use. Uh, unfortunately, all of my geysers have seemed to have gone dormant on me. It just took so long to get to them. So carbon dioxide and this stuff up here is not really doing anything. The hydrogen vent down here has gone dormant, but the system is set up to kind of cool things down and, and make use of that. So that will give me one power source for the space base thing up here or for the rest of my base. Also over here on the left, I've tapped into this natural gas geyser over here. And I'm starting to bring the gas in here at a temperature that's manageable for the natural gas pump. Or the pump that's going to be running the natural gas thing. So that's two main power sources that I can currently capture today. Which should provide more than enough power for the stuff up here. Darn it, this one got too hot again. Whatever. I guess the third one that hopefully I'll be able to at least capture next time here is get this oxygen system up and running. Maybe not next time. I don't know. The temperature in here is still pretty toasty. So I should probably focus on just cooling everything and running a liquid loop down to the thermal nullifier. But that'll have to happen next time. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys have enjoyed this little episode here of Oxygen Not Included. If I've earned your subscription, then thank you so much for that. As always, stay awesome, guys. I'll see you again next time. Peace. Brothgar.